If you guys need any coins for FIFA Ultimate Team, go ahead and use the link in the description below and use the code Johnny for 10% off in this week only. Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you doing? It is me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Crystal Palace career mode. This is season number four, the longest career mode I have done in such a long time. I think the only one I ever did that was this long was Junior FC in FIFA 14. But nonetheless, guys, it would be amazing if you could smash the like button, and if we reach over 1,000 likes, I will upload another video today. Right here, you can see that we have a budget of 14.5 million and 70k in the wage budget and I am requesting funds because we need more money I'm planning on buying a striker who is higher rated than better you know in order to finally have someone alongside Paulsen who can score a lot of goals for our team I have read through all the comments that you guys have left and I'm really proud of you assistant coaches. Thank you so much for the lovely comments and especially the longer ones with like reasoning behind why I should buy a certain player and stuff like that. And I'm really happy that I have you guys around. The first one that came into my mind was Aubameyang, 83 rated, already 28 years old, so I thought he wouldn't be too expensive and he would be at the perfect age for a striker in my opinion. He's experienced and he could score a lot of goals. Same with Seydou Dumbia, who was at Spurs at first and then he went to Paris Saint-Germain as you can see right there. Then I'm asking for Kevin Folland. A player that I've rarely seen being bought by career mode YouTubers. So I offered Berahino straight away and I wanted to see if they would accept that one. And then there was another option. Christian Benteke, 82 rated, 26 years old, striker. Morale, very happy. So it seems like he's enjoying life at Arsenal, but I would still love to get him. 8 million plus Berahino should do the deal, and I'm really looking forward to get one of these strikers into my team. A lot of teams were looking to get Berahino into their team, but sadly that didn't work out, work out for them because most of the time, they were not offering enough money. Boateng is leaving the team once again. I think that's like his fourth loan and he will be going once again to grow in another team because he's obviously not going to be getting any playing time in our squad. Christian Benteke, his team is not accepting the offer I'm making for him. They want too much money. Dortmund also saying no to our offer. Aubameyang, 5 million plus Berahino. I don't know. That... That's a bit much, but I said, fuck it, let's give the money and let's see if we will be able to get him. The transfer offer got accepted by Borussia Dortmund, so the striker that we are closest to right now is Aubameyang. I know his normal position is the right midfield position, but if you guys are watching any games of Borussia Dortmund, he is a very attacking player and he is actually able to play in the striking position as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that, but Aubameyang is declining the contract offer I'm making for him. He says that he's happy at his club and he doesn't want to leave. And that is something I don't understand because he's playing at Borussia Dortmund and I just won the BPL with Crystal Palace. So normally you would think that a player like Aubameyang would join our team very happily, but in the end I'm offering 130k in wages for Aubameyang and he declines it. But I have to say somehow I'm happy with it. And then I said, well, Mitch, this is the guy that a lot of you guys have been asking me to get back into the team. And I really read through all the comments. Some of you, go some of you guys were saying that I should get him at least as a backup striker. So I offered them 10 million. They wanted something between 8.5 and 13 million. So I offered them 10 in hoping that he will join our team. And I was thinking, hey, why can't I just go for Lukaku? He's from Everton, 82 rated, 24 years old, and he's definitely someone who has been suggested in the comments down below as well. So you assistant coaches have really come up with some great choices, and Everton actually accepted the transfer offer I made for Lukaku, and Mitch, his team accepted the offer I made for him. And you guys know that Mitch is an exciting prospect, so we know that he will be one of the best strikers in the game in the future. So the 10 million investment, in my opinion, is okay. I know that I might have paid a little bit too much, 
But in the end, I'm very happy to have Mitch back in the team after all the rejections from all the strikers who were just about to join our team like Aubameyang. I was happy to get Mitch back into the team because he's someone that I have found. He's the same like Aregal. I would love to keep all these young talents that I found who are like really high rated at the start of their game and keep them along alongside this career mode. Then Lukaku, man, after getting Mitch, I didn't have enough money to get Lukaku, so I offered them 8 million plus Berahino, and in the end, they just said, no, we are not going to be accepting it. This is my last offer, actually, 8.4 million plus Berahino, and his team just said no, and I was like, hey, just fuck it. Just, just leave it. And Hoiberg right here against Celta Vigo is getting injured. He is now gone for a freaking long time. That is, that is horrible. Emre Can also gone for six weeks. Hoiberg for two months. This, this sucks ass. Seriously, this is not, this is not what we wanted to, to have at the start of the season. And then I realized, hey, Can is gone. Hoiberg is gone. Why should I be selling better? He know I will keep him guys and Speroni is retiring at the end of the season He's still 78 rated and a lot of you guys have been saying in the last episode that I should keep him in the starting lineup, but Guys, he will end up in this season with his retirement. And I thought, hey, why not give Ledesma the playing time? And just talking about Berahino earlier on, he's now 81 rated. Yes, he got to an 81 rating. And I have really tried to work out my my way of playing with Berahino. And a lot of you guys have been saying that I should be changing his instructions. And that's what I did. I changed his instructions. And in the end, we will see what happened. Bartra Aregal now 81 rated. Adnan 75 rated. Redmond 83 rated. Then we have Ward Prowse who's, who's really growing well. He's 79 rated. Yusuf Paulsen now 76 rated so the team is growing right away before we get into the first BPL match and Mitch is now 76 rated 19 years old he is literally one of the best striking talents in the game right now and I think it was a good investment to keep him in our team as a backup striker alongside Dwight Gale and now it was time to play against Chelsea in the Community Shield once again last season we played against them and won it and this time I want to do the same first up it's Cavani with the first chance and he's passing it over to Ramirez I think who then had the shot Ledesma is in goal yes Speroni guys I promise if I get to like the Champions League semi-final or Champions League final I will play Speroni because he deserves the honor to play in that game. Now in the second half, we are starting off with Yusuf Paulsen trying to get past all these players and then Berahino, holy shit! I just said that I would sell him and then he comes up in this season with growing by plus one right away and then this sick goal from Berahino and... Seriously guys, this guy is making me mad. I just don't know what to do with him. Every time I'm saying I will sell him, he comes up with a sick goal or just do, does something great and uh, gets us the win in a game. And it's just insane to see how better Hino can step up at times and score some insane goals and do whatever I want him to do. And then it's just that he just doesn't want to play at times and it's just so weird now it's Zaha on the left hand side passing it over to Paulsen who's getting through could this be it Paulsen his shot will get saved by Courtois and I think that actually got deflected so Paulsen not able to get a good shot on target now William is on the ball 81st minute and only nine minutes to go William pass it into the middle and then it's Lewandowski He's playing for Chelsea now. He scored a goal against me very late in this game. And then I had to make some changes. Mitch McHugan joining into the game in order to score one in the late minutes. Of course, as always, right after the kickoff, you can just run through the defense because they just don't know what to do. And uh, this game will end in the 90th minute. But obviously, since we are in the community shield, we will go into the penalties right away. And Ledesma... 
Doesn't have to get to this one from Fabregas. He is not able to score that one. Now it's Adnan, our left back, with the first penalty in this game. Will he be able to score against Courtois? Yes, he will. It's 1-0 for Crystal Palace. This could be the first trophy of the season. Ledesma fooling around right there and then he makes the save. So if you fool around and then you can back it up, it's okay for me. Swift, the young talent, will score against Courtois as well. This guy, you all have been down in the comments saying that he is looking insane and that uh, I should be playing him in this season. And he's definitely someone I will be giving a lot of playing time. Then we have Mitch McEugan. Of course, he will score it. It's now 3-1 at this point. And Lewandowski against Ledesma is the last penalty of this game. And he will miss it because Ledesma gets to it. He's the penalty killer right here. He gets to two penalties, I think. And in the end, we are winning it against Chelsea once again in the Community Shield, which actually isn't worth a lot. That's just a prestige game, in my opinion. We are offering 70k and two years to Nathan Redmond. He wanted a new contract and obviously... I'm about to give it to him because he is just uh, one of our top talents in the team. And at first, he said that he doesn't want to accept the contract extension. And at that moment, I was like, holy shit, what's going on? Because we are in the transfer window. And if Redmond isn't accepting the contract, I have to sell him in this transfer window. That would be very sad because we have bought him, we have grown him and right here you can see I'm rejecting all future offers for Berahino which means that I won't sell him in this transfer window. Yes, I have decided in this one. If something special happens and I'm finding someone that I really want in this transfer window, I might still get the new striker. But uh, Berahino is getting another chance guys. I mean, uh, I have to give it to him. And in the end, Nathan Redmond is uh, being a money whore. He's just basically being uh, Raheem Sterling right here, asking for more money. And when he gets it, he accepts the contract. So Nathan Redmond will stick to the team. Ali Adnan also getting a new contract offer because lately he has been growing again after we have loaned him out. It's really great to see him grow finally because I think he's a great left back. But at this point, Emre Can is set in the left-back position in our team. Everton is the next team that we have to play against in the BPL. This is the first match in the BPL and it, I was so excited to see what this team could do in the next season. We are starting it off though with Lukaku, his shot which just <laughs> rolls around on the floor and goes out for a goal kick. Ozan Tufan though with the perfect pass to Yusuf Pausin who could score right here and he does so. He's starting off this season as he left off the last one. As you guys know in the last one he was out of the top scoring list for a long time because we loaned him out and his stats got reset and then he came back to actually be the second or third placed striker in the top scoring list so Yusuf Paulsen literally starting off where he left off in the last season and it's just looking great this team with Ledesma in goal is doing quite fine 42nd minute we are getting in another chance the defense of Everton is able to get that one away Sally Uchan joining in for Ward Prowse right now because he was tired hopefully we can have an impact with that substitution now it's Everton on the ball crossing it over and it will be Ross Barkley getting onto the ball Lukaku gets onto it once again great passing play from Everton Gibson now on the right hand side crosses it in and then Ledesma is able to just tip that one over the bar. Engels though gets the ball off the defender. Passes it into the middle. Yusuf Paulsen is that offside? No it's not. 2-0. 74th minute hits his second goal in this match. And his second goal in the Barclays Premier League. Hopefully the whole season will go this way. Because I would love to see us at the top of the league. And at the top of the Champions League but in order to get the Champions League win I think we have to do a lot of work on the defense we need to get a high rated center back alongside Bjorn Engels and maybe just maybe a new left back and then have Emre Can as a backup for every single position and Berahino 
missing an open net 87th minute and he's just showing once again what I just told you guys in the last match or was it in this one I think it was in the last match against Chelsea he's just one game he's insane and one game he sucks he sucks and that's just so weird I don't know what it is with Berahino but I just don't I just don't understand it and at this point I really I'm not sure once again I just don't know what to do with this guy it's so insane every single game my opinion about Berahino is changing and I'm trying to focus on him to score a load of goals but every time I'm trying to focus on him and pushing him to score a goal it just doesn't work out do you guys have any idea of what I should do with Berahino and please if you are thinking that we should be selling Berahino Tell me in the comments down below once again and this time I might actually get a new striker. Tell me which striker would you like to see in our team who maybe is at like 81, 80 or 82 at this point and uh, you think is better than Berahino. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day and smash that like button. Peace.